like going after the wrong entity. The coroner handles the dead, and the dead actually fit the all caps labeling. Shouldn't he have found bigger issue with those who label newborns and create birth certificates using all caps labeling? Well, I get what you're saying there, just uh, this Joe Smith. The fact of the matter is I am not telling someone else what they should or shouldn't do because that's presumption and assumption and I personally would not do that because it's up to every man and woman as to what they choose to do or not to do. Me saying what they should or shouldn't do presumes that I know better, you know, what's best for their life than they do. So in the, this case, I'm in this video there that you see there, the Coral Blade Grotto broadcast, I am basically commenting on the data given in the case and that's it i'm not saying what he should or shouldn't do and i'm actually passing commentary on the ludicrousness of what it is i mean would it have been, would it have been better for you this joe smith if mark instead would have threatened those people that write birth certificates and threaten to kidnap them and maybe unalive them. I mean, are you okay with that? Does that make it better than, than the coroner? I, I mean, I, I don't know what you're getting after here. So let this, if, if you're open to it, let this be a correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, psychology lesson for you. We're not here to tell other people what they should or shouldn't do. We're just here to look at what is through the lens of the facts, not through the lens of what you or I think someone should have done or shouldn't have done. I know that's a very, very large hurdle for most folks to get by because everybody just does it like it's a habit for them to do that. Myself included, it's been very hard to break myself of that habit. But if you want to get closure on this grammar, and I don't know where you are in the learning curve, but I have to think that, you know, through your comments here, through the content of your comments, that you're still at the beginner level. If you ever decide to get serious about it, contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and apply for classes. Please include your full correct name. Next comment comes from Dennis Thompson. And they say, hello, Jason, I have my popcorn, two front row tickets, arm over behind girlfriend, and real life turning into a SHIT show or another matrix. Question, does Mark know bullet time? David's workshop. Oh, silly me, Russell teaches that, but only after he witnessed your live life claim from another country and never even meeting you or seeing you ever, but can witness it using his bullet time technology. My money is on Russell doing a Rambo breakout. I think you might mean Rambo. I think that might be a typo. And by breakout, I think you may mean B-R-E-A-K. Key factor is Mark having Russell live life claim on him and the money. I really don't know what you're saying there. I really don't. Um, I may have a slight grasp. But in any case, it makes absolutely no sense to me because time does not exist. According to Russell's own teaching, time is no contract. So there is no such thing as bullet time unless you're in the fiction, which 
by my perception and my knowledge, Russell is in the fiction and uses fiction. And therefore, it would make sense that he would use fiction terms like bullet time. For myself and my correct sentence structure contracts, I don't use the word time because there is no time. There's only now space. There's only the continuum. I don't know if it began or if it ends. I just know that it continues. Hence, that's why I call it a continuum. Time is for the fiction. If you're making a schedule and you have a date, or if you're looking at a specific hour of the day, those are locations in the continuum. They're not times in correct sentence structure context. In the fiction, sure. Times, past, future tense, modification. You can go as far as you want down fantasy lane into the land of Narnia if you want to with Russell or with Mark or who, whoever else. But if you want to learn the facts, if you want to become a turn of autonomous, it's probably best to learn the grammar in its purest form. And one of the ways you can do that is to contact me at the email address at the bottom of your screen and apply for workshops, if you're serious. And if you're serious, no matter what is going on, what you prioritize is what is important, you will find a way to put into it what you need to get out. Bottom line. Next comment comes from Property Geek, and they say, Loose cannon is danger to everyone. I know that much. And I think that was a comment regarding uh, a news article, or maybe, where they were talking about loose cannons. Uh... And I just thought, you know, I made some, a funny remark. I thought it was funny where I said, well, loose cannons, they ought to be tightened up. You know, if you've got a loose cannon, it's better to have a tight cannon, right? And then uh, I said, if that's true, how did this particular loose cannon damage you specifically? And the reason why I say that, again, this is a psychological lesson, folks. Because the comment is, loose cannons is a danger to everyone. Everyone which is a synonym in the fiction for all. So Property Geek is claiming all. He's claiming everyone. So everyone would include him. So I'm asking, how did it damage him? And then he says, he did not. I stopped and corrected my intention to contract with him, so saving my money. So therefore, a loose cannon is not a danger to everyone, is it? You see? Psychology. And then I said, well, I guess the loose cannon is not a danger to everyone, as you are not in danger because you utilize critical thinking. My point is, from a CSS, CPSG, psychology point of view, their everyone is unprovable. Their everyone is an unprovable, massive assumption, just like all. And so, again, this is what I steer it towards, folks. Knowledge cultivation. Teaching. Because I'm a tutor, and that's what I do. And I'm trying my best to get long-time viewers, even such as Property Geek, to try and take a different view of things and stop presuming and assuming, because that is a huge roadblock to getting closure on this grammar. Huge roadblock. Next comment comes from Peace, Love, F-A, dot, dot, dot. And they say, what can I say? I think they mean say. I hope we learn our lessons from this episode in the fiction world, this fiction world. Bottom line is that there's never an excuse. I think they mean never. An excuse for abuse or for doing harm to anyone. Yes, there's symbolic meaning of the red N.W. wig. Okay, to address... The second sentence, bottom line, is that there's never an excuse for abuse or doing harm to anyone. I understand that mentality, but here's the thing, peace, love, F.A. If you come at me with a baseball bat physically trying to harm me, you're going to get harmed in a process. I am going to harm you. I'm going to harm you to the point where you can no longer harm me. And I'm going to keep harming you until you're no longer a threat. So that's not an excuse. That's a reason. That's a volition. My volition is to be safe. 
If you threaten that safety and there's imminent danger, then you're going to get harmed. And in that case, all bets are off the table. There is no peace and neutrality. There is no honor, grace. There is no rule one, rule equal. I'm going to do what I have to do. You have voided the conditions of my contract, of my vessel. You're trespassing. I'm going to stop that any way I can, any way I need to. Do what I have to do and not feel a bit bad about it. That's when harm and force can be used. When it is incorrect to use such things is when you're doing it to someone who means you no harm, who is not harming you or threatening you at all. And then you maliciously harm them. That is, as we would say in the fiction, wrong or not correct. And some would say evil. Oh, and then they say, yes, there's a symbolic meaning of the red and W wig. I agree. It's funny that they don't, they choose not to share what they think those things mean. Um, maybe someday they will. Next comment comes from Jose Powell. And they say, also, thanks for sharing your perspective on Russell. And you make a great point. I had no idea he had an arrest warrant for you. Why? That seems silly. You seem to handle it well because your volition is strong. Good on you, sir. Uh, in the video you're commenting on there, Jose Pal, I give the reason why there's an arrest warrant for me. And I will reiterate here for you and for anyone else watching. Russell J. Gould thinks that I am stealing or using his grammar without his authorization. At least that's from what I can see on his website, that's what he may think. But there are no worries there, Jose Pal, because I'm not using his grammar because he doesn't use correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar. He uses quantum gobbledygook and it, otherwise known as adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble. He doesn't use correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. And if you don't believe me, show me any full-page document written by Russell J. Gould, authored by him. Show me any one page, two pages, ten pages, I don't care. Any public document from him, and I will show you all the mistakes. And I'm not talking about just spelling errors and punctuation errors, and excessive spacing errors. I'm talking about incorrect use of italics. I'm talking about incorrect positional sequencing, incorrect positionals. I'm talking about everything that voids the mathematical interface. It is not correct sentence structure. So there's no issue there. The arrest warrant is null and void because I'm not using his quantum gobbledygook bullshit. I'm using pure correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, and I have about a thousand videos on this channel that can certify that. Can anyone else say that? Next comment comes from Sovereign Entity and they say, perhaps he will use the time to become awakened to himself. We live our beliefs and our beliefs make our realities. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're free to speculate however you want to speculate. Perhaps he will use the time to awaken to himself whatever that may be. I have to think that you mean better himself, become a better person. We're talking about Mark Lowercase K here. It's my experience that most criminals who go to prison for a long stretch of time use that time to become smarter and stronger criminals. That's my experience personally with folks that I know that have been to prison and are criminals like Mark. Now there's a very small percentage of them that usually they'll do something like they'll find a religion and they'll become religious zealots. Like they'll find Jesus in there or they may convert to Islam. It depends upon what faction he decides to run with. And, um, well, Fortunately or unfortunately in prison, race does mean something. 
So we can kind of guess where he might go with it. But Mark doesn't seem like a very physically active or imposing individual. Quite honestly, the guy doesn't look like he could fight his way out of a wet paper bag. So he's probably not going to do very well in prison. If he's in prison prison, which we don't know where he's going to go. He might be put in a quote-unquote prison that's actually like a country club. Who knows? Who knows? But of course, I don't wish any ill will on the guy. I don't wish any ill will on anyone. Um, he's going to do what he's going to do. It's his choice. It was his choice to do what he did. And now it's his choice to do what he's going to do, just like you or I. Next comment comes from QPWO10FUL. And they say, sad, there is no closure. First of all, every text has multiple layer reading in a language is Devanagari or language of gods. Chimeras are half gods. And my kuleana to that is perhaps sad for you. For me, there is closure. Thanks to correct sentence structure. If you ever feel like learning it and achieving your own closure, email me at jasonmatthewgs17 at gmail.com. Please include your full name. Yeah, I mean, once people start talking about gods and half-gods, I know that they are fully ensconced in the fiction La La Land of Narnia. And uh, they're probably going to have a pretty hard time learning this grammar. Next comment comes from DMIT Dimitri. Uh, I don't know what the rest is. And they say, whatever the word has a root, D-I-V-I, God in Latin, I would be careful to section this part of a word. Would you now? Now, would you be careful? Would you be saying the same thing if you had closure on correct sentence structure, communication, parsley, syntax, grammar? Which, this is a correct sentence structure channel having to do with grammar. So right away I can see in this comment there is a beginner, if that, probably not even a beginner, probably someone who just happened upon this, and they don't really know what they're talking about, but they're still going to share whatever it is they want to share with me, even though they have no clue what quantum grammar is or, or how it works or the particles or anything like that. To link vision with division as a result of divide may be a mistake, in my opinion. Yes, your opinion. Vision is from visio. Division is from divide. My gosh, in seven plus years of doing this, I never knew that. Thank goodness for this guy. All right, so they go on to give me some examples here. Um, but they're being nice about it. And again, they're bringing creator into it. And now I'm not saying anything that there isn't a creator or whatever. But creator is someone who creates. And so if you're using correct sentence structure, communication, parts, and syntax, grammar, you would be the creator. You would be the author. You're creating the grammar using correct mechanics. And so what I did was... I performed with the balance of honor and grace. I extended them grace, and I explained to them that if they would study a little bit further, and I gave them a link to the Parse playlist to show them how to Parse. There's like 70-some videos in that playlist alone that can show you how to Parse in the uh, context of correct sentence structure, communication, Parse, syntax, grammar. And then I also gave them the finite mean of the particle di, which, to sum it up in one word, means source. Okay? And you would know that if you would study just a little bit, or actually a lot. It takes a lot of study. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, Dimitri. It took me 2,000 hours in 2017. In the year 2017, it took me 2,000 hours of study before I could even use this, and even then, I still didn't have closure. I began teaching in February of 2018. So, here's a psychological lesson for you, and this is something I use myself. Before I open my mouth, I try to figure out and know what it is I'm talking about and know what platform I'm stepping on and 
read the room, so to speak. But I mean, I appreciate you coming on here and I can see that you do a lot of parse work. But that's only a very... In the context of everything, of syntax and correct sentence structure, parse is the backbone of it. That is true. But it is one-third of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. You still have two-thirds to learn. And I hope you do. I hope you contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and apply for classes if you're serious. Step up. This next comment, I hesitated about including it in this video. I certainly wasn't going to publish it because this has nothing to do with grammar. It really doesn't. This has to do with someone looking for something outside of the bounds of this channel. So I'll just share it with you because they said they were okay with it. And it really has, I don't think, anything to do with the post that I posted, which was of Donald Trump, uh, UFC fighter Kamara Usman, and a third individual. I can't remember who the third individual was. And they're all standing next to two Stars and Stripes flags on, hanging from poles that have chickens with the wings down, or eagles with the wings down, which, according to Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller, symbolize Vatican jurisdiction. So this is what Dennis Thompson says. Hello, Jason. Question for you. Okay, we're looking for a question here. He says, question for you. I am hoping you can shine some light on. I value your mindfulness and forward thinking a lot and over the past couple of years have taken your words and opinion and used them and it has helped myself interaction with others, mostly within the workplace, a great deal. So thank you. Seriously, thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you for the kind words. Dennis. So thank you. Okay. Can you take some time and put together some of the rabbit holes research that has opening your mind or broken system control books, people's ideas that have shaped you and made you the man you are now, e.g. 10 things to look into. Yes, yes, the language, but as I am still homeless moving about four to five times a year, for me, it is up there to do list, but my grammar is very weak. So cannot even hang a whiteboard up most places. I have found G-I-U-R-E-H. Great channel. Yes. Um, Dr. Sean Haross, H-R-O-S-S, who, coincidentally or not, Dr. Sean Haross is homeless in the European countryside by choice because he claims that the Swiss authorities are trying to unalive him. Great channel, though. Great channel. He, he has a lot of knowledge into symbolism and his interpretations of what he thinks these symbols mean. And, I mean, there's, to me, there's probability and possibility. And I put a lot of what Dr. Sharon Haras says into the probability folder. Just cannot find any holes in it. If you wanted not to post for what reason, totally understand in public, maybe send email in private and confidential ways so I could copy forward and send to other private matter back. Actually, the only way that you and I would email is if you email me first. That's the way it works. That's the terms and conditions. Um, you must include your full correct name. And uh, so if, if you wish to communicate with me in the private, that's the first step. You email me. You come aboard my vessel. That's the way it works. I don't need legal lawful money, have zero debt, etc. But a level head from someone I have not seen differ over time, but you have corrected yourself in much respect for doing it if needed. Just seeing a real correct email, just seeing a real correct email to copy send back without major mistake would help me move forward. Actually, I would highly recommend not copying or plagiarizing anything. What I suggest to my students is to learn it yourself so that you can create authentic, original work. 
I know a few people have, you know, they would take what I write and then copy and paste it into an email and send it back to me and just where I put my name, they put their name. But it makes absolutely no sense because I put personal things in there that pertain to me, not them. So now they're claiming to be me, but replacing my name with their name. You see, it just doesn't work. Using templates, you can use templates in a general sense, but you still have to correct things to make it personal to you, not just your name. So the best and safest thing to do is to learn the grammar for yourself. And there are a thousand videos on here, Dennis, that you can study. If you, you know, you have the now space to do it, you study it, learn the grammar, and then create your own sentences. You can use mine as guidelines, but to copy and paste and to plagiarize is never a good idea. All right, because you don't have closure on it. You did not create it. You're taking my words and claiming them as your own. Do you see what I'm saying? It's a very subtle psychological thing. But of course, you can do what you want. It's your choice. Um, I'm just telling you as a tutor, I highly recommend not doing that. I highly recommend learning the grammar. And I don't know if you've ever sent me an email. So it's interesting that you choose this platform to contact me on and say all this stuff rather than emailing me, which jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com has been available since December of 2017, and I don't think you've emailed me. I could be wrong, though. I get a lot of emails. I sent Mark a message about five, six years back, and he sent an email with rules, but some things didn't add up. I understand I am my authority. I am not afraid to make a mistake within your system. Well, of course not. I mean, mistakes are just mistakes. It's not a take, right? I mean, if you come in with humility, you can make all the mistakes you want as long as you learn and correct them and understand why they're a mistake, understand what damage they create or could create, and fix it and move on. So, yeah, it, it's nothing to do with fear. Everything to do with humility. Hope you understand... P.S. I understand you offer free video face-to-face, -face, but as it is not language, I am seriously happy to pay you money for 15-minute time. It's a business idea. If you knew my history, understand my now zero trust after bio father. Oh, doped mother, ex-wife betrayal. Maybe you see why it is a person over YouTube might help me answer a question I have limited knowledge about. So I don't... I feel like this whole comment is Dennis giving some backstory to his life to perhaps get me to email them so that they can ask me this question. But why wouldn't they just email me and ask me the question in the confidential? Why wouldn't they just email me and ask me? Why go through this? See, this, this is what raises red flags, people. And you may think it's harsh or kind of a bleak outlook. Folks, I got people out there. I have actually have people out there that want to do me harm. All right, they want bad things to happen to me. They have malicious volition towards me for whatever reason. Kind of like, you know, the, the Democrats and Republicans, how they get so violent because they disagree so much and they, they're just so entrenched in their protagonist-centered reality. It's kind of like that. Like, <clears throat> I'll get very violent seeming individuals from the Russell J. Gould camp, especially, who threaten me physical harm, like they're going to pull up on me and do something, which I kind of wish they would, because that would be... Okay, we're not even going to go there. It'd be fun, though. It'd be fun to see something like that. Um, so I have to be careful with people like this. And when I see red flags, I pay attention to them. That's how I've kept myself safe. 
Why wouldn't this individual just email me and ask me the question they want to ask me? Why? If they're going to pay me for a 15-minute consultation, why wouldn't they email me and ask me that? In the confidential. Interesting. But we'll see how it plays out. That Dennis, that is the only way that anything is going to happen between you and I is if you email me first. That's the first step. Thank you for the comment. Thank you for sharing your story. And maybe I'll hear from you.